Good morning to each and every one of you. We are going to be in Psalm 128. Psalm 128. So if you would, turn your Bibles there as we will consider a message from God's Word this morning. As you are turning there, I would like to take a moment briefly to say thank you for all that came out yesterday and with the book launch party. I started writing this book in 2007 and I you begin writing a book and you wonder if you'll ever finish it. Well, thankfully, I did finish it with the support of many folks. And throughout that time, it was a very exciting time. There were some other things that were occurring and specifically and very joyfully within that same period of the last three and a half years. Mitzi and I have been blessed with two wonderful children, Brayden, who is three, and Brianna, who is one, almost one and a half. And I know everyone here is mindful of the fact that today is Father's Day, and we certainly want to wish a happy Father's Day to everyone, all the dads, grandpas, great-grandfathers, and great-great-grandfathers who are here A couple of weeks ago, I got a Time magazine in the mail, and it's one of those that caught my attention immediately. It's dated May 2nd, 2011. I don't know how I got it. I don't subscribe to Time magazine, but it came in. And what grabbed my attention more than anything was the title that says, The Time 100. And the subtitle across is The World's Most Influential People. And I thought, man, this is probably pretty interesting. So I flipped through the pages, and of course, there were some of our current day political leaders in our country, President Obama, Joe Biden. But there were some other folks that were more in the business scene, such as Mark Zuckerberg, who is the founder of Facebook, who has done very, very well. Prince William made an appearance uh, in this. That's caught a lot of folks' attention. And I tell you one who my two children really love that they probably would not recognize any other name in this, but Justin Bieber even made the top 100 most influential people in the world. He sings some songs that certainly catches everyone's attention as a soon-to-be young man. But on the same day as I was flipping through this magazine, a little while later that night, things were totally chaotic in our house. It was one of those days that everyone had a long day. Everyone was tired, and so we were bathing and getting Brianna and Brayden ready for bed, and it was pajama time, and and I had Brianna, Mitzi had Brayden, and so she was fussing a little bit trying to get that diaper on and trying to get her pajamas on, and I can hear all the commotion Two rooms over, I knew uh, Braden was not wanting to put his pajamas on anyway. So the, temp- the tempers were starting to flare up a little bit. People were upset. We were trying to figure out what's going on. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of all of this chaos, Braden runs into Brianna's room where I was at and says, Daddy, I want to be like you. And I don't know about you, but if your emotions have ever changed dramatically within a second. I almost teared up as I was thinking, wow, Braden, you you might want to be a preacher someday. You might want to help people later on. And I said, well, why did you say that, Braden? And he said, well, I don't want to wear a shirt to bed, Daddy. And I was immediately reminded as I have this Time magazine in mind and all of these things is that we can be very influential to the people in our lives. Psalm 128 is a psalm about influence. It is a psalm that reminds everyone, especially fathers, especially the men, that we influence other people in our lives. And as we consider this psalm, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that all people, especially men who are supposed to be the leaders in the home, are to have a good relationship with their heavenly father, are to have a good relationship with their wife, the good relationship with their children, 
and also a good relationship with their community and their nation. The Bible says in Psalm 128, verse number one. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like fruitful vine within your house. Your sons will be like olive shoots around your tables. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem. And may you live to see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. As we take a closer look at this psalm this morning, as we're thinking about the influence that we have in our lives, we see, first of all, that we all need to have a relationship with our Lord. The Bible says in the first verse of our text this morning, blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. Verse number four of our text this morning. Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. Yes, we are going to have influence on people, either positive or negatively. However, what we understand is that influence will be very much informed by our own relationship with God. First things first, our relationship with our Father. And I ask all of the fathers this morning, and all of us who are members of the church, do you fear the Lord? Do you walk in His ways? Now when we talk about fear of the Lord, I realize that you know the difference between that type of fear and many times the way fear is used today. We're not to go live our lives in constant uh, fear and that we are afraid of God or that he's waiting for us to make a mistake and will immediately demolish us or destroy us in some form or fashion. But it's this godly fear, this reverent fear, this respect for God. It's an understanding, of course, that God is God and we are not. And that because God is the creator of this world, because God is the creator of our lives, we give him respect. We give him fear and knowing that he has created us and that he is in control of this entire world. And fathers, what you need to know is that God has always desired for his people not only to have a fear for him, but also to walk in his ways. I'm mindful of a New Testament passage in 1 John chapter 1 that talks about how we are to walk in the light. As a Christian, are you walking in the ways of the Lord? Are your actions, are your behaviors congruent to this faith that you say that you have? That this fear, this respect of God, are your actions matching the words that you express in your prayers and to other people? But not only do we see that this man, this blessed man, has a relationship with God, that he fears him and that he walks in his ways... But we also see secondly from this text this morning that this man, this blessed man, has a positive influence on his wife. By the way, dads, the best thing that you can do for your children is to love their mother, to love their, to love your wife, to treat her with respect, to treat her with love, and to always make sure that her needs are taken care of, and that you're not only providing for the needs of your children, but as leaders of the home, you are providing for the needs of your wife as well. The Bible says in our text this morning, verse number three, that the wife will be like a fruitful 
vine. These vines were symbols of prosperity, of abundance, and that it wasn't just an ornament type feature in the in the land of the people, but rather it was a fruitful vine which was able to create profit for the family, not just in a financial sense, but the David's using this in a metaphorical sense that the women of the home, the wives, the mothers play a very valuable part in the home of God's people. The vine is generally known as someone that something that is weak and tender and needs extra care and extra protection. And as the blessed man of the home, as the leader of the home, the father is making sure that, yes, the needs of the children are taken care of. But in his tender care, providing that same concern for his wife. So this blessed man has a relationship with God. He has a positive relationship with his wife. And then third, as we see in the text this morning, he also has a positive influence with his children. His sons will be like olive shoots around the table. The idea, the imagery that the olive shoots and the idea that... The prosperity goes for generation to generation. These olives were able to create a sense of stability in the lives of the people then. And what we see here is the olive shoots are alike around the table in that the legacy of the father, the legacy of this blessed man is being passed to the next generation. And I love the imagery here in the text that talks about how these olive shoots are around the table. Many times in our own busy lives, we don't have time to sit down around the table to spend time with our children, to spend time with our spouses. However, what we see is that the the picture of what a family should look like involves not only A loving relationship with the wife, but a loving relationship with the children as well. As all have value, all have importance. And as the leader of the house, this blessed man knows that he needs to take care of his wife and he needs to take care of his children. That is what leadership is all about in the home. Fathers do have a very enormous responsibility. Yes, the men are the leaders in the church, but they're also the leaders in the home as well. Over in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1, we know that the Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And then specifically, verse number four, and you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training or in the admonition of the Lord. Yes, this father is trying, this blessed man is trying to have a positive influence on his wife and on his children But what he needs to realize is that this can very quickly go bad, that it can very quickly go wrong. And that in the very same way that he can be a positive influence, he can also be a negative influence as well. The very idea that Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, tells us that it is possible for fathers to actually create, generate, or facilitate anger and rebellion in the lives of their children. Someone has once said, and I thought it was very profound, rules without relationship bring rebellion rules without relationship bring 
rebellion. Yes, there needs to be structure in the home. Yes, there needs to be standards. Yes, there needs to be expectations. And as the the father, as the head of the house, you are responsible for making sure that the discipline and the training and the admonition occurs. However, if it's just rules and no relationship, no hugs or no affection, no time, no quality investment in the lives of the children, that many times that these rules without a relationship will only foster anger, resentment, and even rebellion in the lives of children. So yes, have those expectations, have those rules, but also spend time in cherishing and taking care of the wife and the children. And as our text concludes here in Psalm 128, and we're about to shift to the New Testament in just a moment, in Psalm 128 we see that yes, this blessed man has a relationship with the Lord, that he fears him, that he walks in his ways. Secondly, he has a relationship, a positive influence on his wife. He has a positive influence on his children. And then fourth, what we see is that this goes beyond, this positive influence goes beyond the home and that all of Jerusalem, all of Israel may experience blessings and peace as a result of what's going on in the home. Someone has said, if you want to change the world, you need to change your country. And if you want to change your country, you want to, you need to change the state. And if you want to change the states, you need to change the cities. And if you want to change the cities, you need to change the communities. And if you want to change the communities, you have to change the homes. It all begins in the home. And this positive influence that this blessed man is experiencing, it begins in his home, but it goes beyond that into the city of Jerusalem and into the nation of Israel here in these Old Testament times. So many times we want to start on the world level or the national level to create change. But Scripture teaches us that each one of us has the opportunity to create change by changing the way that we live our lives in our family units, in our homes. But as we turn to the New Testament, 1 Timothy chapter 5, and as we strive or striving to draw application from these dynamics of these positive influences... I'd like to ask you a question this morning. What if your child grows up to be like you? Many times you'll, we'll hear our own children say, Daddy, Mommy, I want to grow up and be just like you. What if that actually happens? What if your children end up being exactly the way you are? First of all, this morning, as we draw application to God's word about this idea of positive influence, what if your children end up having your same professionalism? First Timothy chapter five, verse number eight. Notice what scripture says here. If anyone does not provide for his own family or his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Now, when I use the idea of professionalism, I'm not targeting a specific type of profession, but talking about it in general, what if your children end up working the same way that you do? Not the specific job, but the same work ethic, the same mentality, the same level of motivation that you have to provide for your family. What would that be like? What would happen if your children end up just like you? Are you someone who takes it very seriously, your responsibility to provide for 
your family. In fact, the Bible says here in verse number eight that it, there's only one or two things much worse. And that is, of course, being an infidel all together. There is an important connection between being men of faith and men of family as well. And as we show our love to God, we show our love to our families by providing for them. But of course, we need to have a balance. We need to have a balance that says that, yes, I need to provide for my family financially, but I do not want to neglect them emotionally or personally in the time that I spend away from them. What if your children end up having your sense of professionalism? Secondly, this morning, and each of these start with the letter P. What if your children end up having, fathers, your level of purity? Turn the, your Bibles with me, if you will, to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse number 4. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 4. The Bible says marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Dads, what happens if your children grow up to have the same level of purity as you? What will their attitude be about women? Will they treat them with respect, with dignity? Or will they degrade them and just think of them as objects of lust that can be manipulated at any possible time? How will they be in terms of purity to their own spouse? The idea of being faithful to the spouse in order to not create any type of barrier between the fidelity that is occurring between husband and wife. Third this morning in the book of James chapter 1, just one page over from Hebrews 13. What if your children end up having your professionalism, your purity in third What if they grow up and have the same exact patience that you have right now in your life? Notice what James chapter 1 verse number 2 says. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Many times we don't have patience in our lives and we tend to lose our patience when we're trying to work out these various trials in our lives. But the Bible says here in James 1 is that when these trials come by, not to lose your temper or to lose your cool or to lose your patience, rather to consider it all joy. How do you handle conflict? How do you handle family tension? How do you handle the stress at work? How do you handle the stress from what's going on in the home or in the community? All of those things, the way that you handle them, are being watched very closely by your children. What if they grow up having the same level of patience as you? And then fourth and finally this morning, as we go to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, And we go to the words of Jesus. The entire context is verses 25 through 33. But we are simply going to read beginning in verse number 33 of Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says, but seek first his kingdom And his righteousness and all these things will be giving to you as well. What if your children grow up having the same priorities as you? 
Who is number one in your life? Fathers, what is it that is more important to you? Are you making every effort to manage your time to to take care of your family, but also to make sure that you are seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? How do you spend your time when it comes to church, to worship and opportunities for your family to fellowship and to learn God's word with other Christian people? How do you spend your time? What is your priorities like when you have the opportunity to go out and drink with the friends or to be home with your family? What are your priorities like with your faith in God and with your focus on your family? Hopefully, you will seek first the kingdom of God. And by seeking first the kingdom of God, you will naturally be inclined To take care of your family as well. So as we conclude this morning, I'd like to go back to Psalm 128. And notice the beautiful words of this psalm. As we realize that you may not be the most influential person in the world. But what we need to realize is that you are the most influential person in your world. Not the entire world where every single person in every single nation will recognize your name. But your specific world in which everyone that you come into contact with knows your name. Your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your your parents, your cousins, your friends, your aunts, your uncles, the people at church. You have the opportunity to be the most influential person in your world. And because of that, that gives us a sense of understanding and a sense of opportunity and responsibility to say, I need to make sure that I fear my Lord and I walk in his way. Psalm 128, 1. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. Are you fearing the Lord this morning? Are you walking in his ways? If not, we encourage you to make any change this morning to make sure you are fearing the Lord, that you are walking in his ways by becoming a Christian for the first time, by believing in Christ, repenting of sins, confessing faith and being baptized into Christ for the remission of those sins, or by coming back to the Lord to begin that journey again, to walk again by repenting of sins and praying to the Lord. If we can help you in any way, why don't you come forward while we stand and while we sing together?